I'm back at UK Bike Fit with Dan Smith, who's gonna give us some gold, give us some wisdom on how do you translate a fit from one bike to another bike. So I'm back with Dan from UK Bike Fit. Um, we've done quite a few videos now together on Bike Fit. I think this is probably the fourth, mm -hmm. I think. So I'll link those down below. You should go and watch those first. But for those of you who don't know who Dan is, do you want to maybe just introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. So my name's Dan. I'm a bike fitter and physiotherapist in Matlock, Derbyshire. One of the best bike fairs in the UK. In the world. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to get in some kit and then we'll get on the bike. Let's do it. Down. Bow, 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 bow. So first thing we're doing is just uh, double checking my fit. It's been maybe like five months since I've been in here. Just making sure that's fine before we start taking any measurements. But I don't think I'll be too far out. <laughs> <laughs> So we've not really changed that much on the bike. Uh, we just did a little bit of a saddle position, moved it a little bit back. So this is a new saddle on here from the last time that I was with Dan. The fit is good, we've locked that in, and now we're gonna have to figure out what measurements do we need to take? How would we translate this fit onto another bike that we might have? Okay, so we've got a drawing of a bike. I'm assuming that we're gonna put some measurements on this little piece of paper, <laughs> and then I can take this home to my gravel bike where I can apply the measurements. Um, Dan, what are we gonna start with? Better drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone measures a bike differently. That's the, that's the first thing. And as long as you measure it the same way every time on each bike, then your measurements are gonna be uh, transferable, consistent. Yeah, yeah. consistent. So I use four simple basic measurements to transfer your fit, your body position, onto another bike. So what are the four things we're gonna measure? And we need to do these in order as well, that's, that's important. We've got saddle height, saddle setback, fit reach, and then saddle to bar drop. If you measure those four in order, consistently on one bike to another, you'll get the same riding position there or thereabouts. Cool, so number one, saddle height. Saddle height. Let's do it. So we're gonna start at the center of the bottom bracket, and then we're gonna go all the way up the seat tube, following the seat tube, to the top of the saddle in line with the clamp on the seat post. Okay. That is our saddle height. So I presume it's easier to do it on the other side, right? Because there's actually a hole on that side, whereas yeah. it may be difficult to measure yeah. on that one. So to measure saddle height, I start with an imaginary line going from bottom bracket up to the seat clamp, and then take the top of the saddle profile, so the very top of the bit of the saddle that's in line with the seat clamp. Right. Straight line down to the center of the bottom bracket. So why are you not using like the, because I've seen some people talk about center of the rail. Yeah. Why are you not using the rail? Why are you using this? Because on some saddles they dip and like other saddles they don't. Like why yeah. that part? So different shapes of saddle, like you say, some dip in the middle and some, some stay, stay more flat, but also there's a big variation in the top of the saddle to the saddle rail right. between different saddles. So if you take a measurement from the top of the saddle, there's gonna be variations in like padding depth and padding thickness that you'll need to take into account if you're using a different saddle. Um, but you're gonna be much closer by taking it from the top of the saddle rather than from the saddle rail. Cool. So what, have we, what measurement have we got? We have got 756. Cool. Number two is saddle setback. So for saddle setback, we're gonna take a plumb line vertically from the center of the bottom bracket, the same point we started from with the saddle height. And this time we're measuring from the tip of the saddle horizontally to that plumb line. And that's number two, saddle setback. Oh, you said no fancy lasers. I did, didn't I? And did now, I? And you've now got a fancy laser. Did I say that? You did say no fancy lasers, yeah. Oh, did, I, did I say no or did I say as little as possible? Maybe I said as little, roll it back. If I know. <laughs> <laughs> what, we're, what we're saying is you basically need to get a, this plumb, is the, a plumb line yes. from here to here, and this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. If you easy. don't have a laser, yeah. Yeah, plumb how bob. do you do it? Plumb bob. 
So just a, a weight on a bit of string. Yeah. And just hang it down through the bottom bracket. Yeah, fix it off of something. You <coughs> or something like just yeah, just literally like yeah. just hold it so it's dangling there. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got laser, that's basically what you put a plumb line on the, the middle of the bottom bracket and that's going to a straight line up. Straight and up. So now we measure from the front of the saddle. Yeah, from the tip of the saddle. Should just say about this first though. So it's important that you, if you're doing this at home, you have the bike stood as vertically as possible, as level as possible. Right, right, so it's not leaning side to side. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, because that could, could screw things up. Okay. So we're gonna take a measurement from the tip of the saddle to that plumb line. And that's 109 millimeters. Number three is fit reach. And that is a diagonal measurement from the tip of the saddle again, all the way to the back of the grip on the shifter. So what does that look like on the bike? It's from tip of the saddle, diagonally across the bike to the back of the grip. Now, I would describe that as the bit where the web of your thumb and forefinger should go into the back of the grip when you're trying to change gear or brake. And that is 677. Seven. The last measurement they're gonna look at is the saddle to bar drop. So that is the difference in height between the saddle and the center of the bar. Now, Grant has usefully drawn a bike with zero millimeters saddle to bar drop. <laughs> so that doesn't look too, too clear, but we're gonna show you on the bike. Okay, so before you start taking this measurement, make sure that your bike is vertical. Make sure that the floor's level and that the bike is, is level on that floor. And then almost also when you're measuring, just make sure that you're taking a, a vertical measurement straight up and straight down, just so you're not on, on an angle. So we're gonna measure from the floor to the tip of the saddle, and that measures 1036. And then we're gonna go over here to the bar. Same again, make sure your measurement is vertical. And we're gonna go from the floor to the center of the handlebar, as if you were to cut it in half horizontally and take it from that point there, which is 963. 1036. 1036. Minus yeah. 963. Nine, six, three. I think that's 73 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Dan just did it on the calculator. <laughs> uh, okay, Fucking 1036 minus 963, 73 millimeters. So that is our saddle bar drop. Correct. Okay, so we've got our measurements. We've done them in order. We've got the numbers. Is it now just a case of simply measuring the other bike that we want to translate the fit to and just trying to get to the same numbers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you've got the measurements that you, you're going to translate. When you're translating them onto another bike, you definitely want to do them in this order to make sure that you're matching the front end of the bike to the back mm -hmm. and not the other way around. This will only work if you're matching a road bike to another road bike or a gravel bike or a similar geometry drop, drop bar bike rather than trying to put these onto a mountain bike, this is, this is going to work. This right. isn't going to give you the same fit. And I guess sometimes you might not be able to match that fit yeah. because the, the frame is just going to be too different. Exactly, yeah. Differences in frame geometry will mean that you'll not get the exact same measurements that you're going to get on one bike to another. Um, yeah. And you know, to get these measurements exact on another road bike might mean a change in stem length or a change of bar or uh, a change of spacer stack or yeah. something around the front end. Um, and so I guess like the point of this is if you're trying to translate a, a fit to another bike, you really should have done this before you even buy the bike when you're thinking yeah. about what geometry of frame you're going to buy. And I don't really think we have enough time to touch on it today because I guess that's a whole topic in itself of like, what should you be looking for when you buy a new bike, what geometry. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so if you want to see that, maybe we could do another video. So leave a comment down below. But I think one thing I would say that's been really helpful for me is there's a website called Geometry Geeks. Yes. I think that's what it's called, that Dan showed me. And basically you can search any bike on there and it will give you the, 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 the size, the geometry of the frame. And so that's really helpful to be able to compare two bikes. But yeah, there's a whole realm of other things that we can chat about, so yes. maybe not today. That is a can of worms, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, hopefully that makes sense. This is what we've tried to do today is show if you've got another bike and you want to translate your fit from one to the other, this is how you do it. And I think for me, the interesting thing has been all of those little measuring points mm -hmm. and doing it in that order, because I just think yes. I would have like done it in a whole random order. Yeah. But anyway, 
If you want to do any more videos with Dan, um, he might do one or two more with us, maybe. Um, so if you've got any ideas of videos that you'd like to see or anything that yeah, you, is really bothering you with your fit, not individual cases, because a few of you have commented down below that you're like knees sore or something like that. We can't fix that, but we can do more general. I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pick, a, pick an appointment um, with Dan. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.